Welcome to Tech Photo Blog. This is episode number 18. This week I'm going to be talking a bit about the internal triggering lag of the camera axe. This came up because a customer reported that the fast trigger menu didn't seem to be working correctly. And upon debugging it, I can verify that. So instead of just fixing the fast trigger menu, I decided to incorporate that into the advanced trigger menu, get rid of the fast trigger menu, and also do some measurements to see exactly how fast uh, the, these triggering menus are, and how much lag the camera axe is introducing to the system. So this is the setup I'm using to measure the actual lag introduced by the camera axe. Uh, the basic setup here is I'm using my trusty Rigel oscilloscope to measure the uh, input voltage from this gate sensor and that's going to be channel number one and then channel number two is connected to the uh, camera flash one output so I'll plot both of those graphs onto the oscilloscope and the distance between the the two changes in voltage will be the amount of lag uh, it takes for this uh, gate sensor to actually affect the uh, flash so now I'll show you the software settings that I'm using when running these experiments, this is a beta version of the Camera Axe software that I'm using right now, but when I release uh, the 5.1 version of the software, it'll include these changes. So pretty much everything's the same on this menu in the new software, uh, except for trigger type and trigger value. So if I go into trigger type, there used to be threshold, high, and low triggers, and all of those use analog measurements to determine whether uh, a sensor is being triggered or not. So an analog signal is, is really important for certain types of sensors like the microphone sensor where you have this wave uh, of values and you can't just have an either on or off. There's different values of on or off and for those kinds of things you're going to want to continue to use the analog uh, reads. However, other sensors like the uh, gate sensor uh, tend to either be at zero volts or at around five volts and for those kinds of sensors a digital trigger type will work great so it'll either record um, a low signal or a high signal and the advantage of a digital signal is that it's much faster for the uh, microcontroller that I'm using to read a digital signal than an analog signal uh, it takes about a hundred microseconds to read an analog signal and about one microsecond to read a digital signal. So that's about a hundred times faster for digital signals. So when I've selected digital for the type, and I go over here to value, uh, I can either select low or high. Those are the only two options. So again, for the sensors that this works for, the uh, digital reads will be much faster and you might as, might as well use them. And now I plan to run some experiments with the oscilloscope uh, using, the, the first test will use an analog read and we'll see how long those take and how much delay the camera axe introduces when using that mode. Then I'll switch over to this digital mode and see how much overall time is overall delay is removed from the system when we're using a, a digital read. So now I have it set up for analog reads and uh, the uh, x-axis here is um, time and each one of the boxes is going to be a hundred microseconds and in the Y axis it's voltage and each one of the boxes is going to be 2 volts. So now when I trigger the gate sensor I see that it's about a hundred and let's say 70 microseconds delay and then if I clear that out I change the camera axe to use digital reads. Now I set the gate sensor. I see the delay here is about 
60 microseconds. So that's quite a bit faster. One measurement does not an experiment make. So what I did was I measured the delay from analog reads 10 times, and then I measured the delay from digital reads 10 times. Those are the values I got. And that gives me an average delay for analog reads of 224 microseconds, and an average delay for digital reads of 69 microseconds. And I found that the max variance between the minimum and maximum for analog reads was 110 microseconds, and for digital, that was uh, only 40 microseconds. So what does that actually mean in real-world terms? Well, I thought that something moving around 200 feet per second would be an interesting um, speed of an object because that, that's, I believe, that's a little faster than a baseball bat or a golf club will move. And I found that in 60 microseconds that such an object would move about an eighth of an inch. So that's not very much movement. I, I think that, you know, especially with these digital um, reads, that, uh, you know, you can capture almost anything with the camera axe. And um, I've done a little thinking about uh, how things could be made faster. And I do think that there's optimization opportunities in the software um, to improve, uh, especially these digital values. I bet you that um, we can get this average and this variance uh, microsecond knocked down with some optimization work. Uh, if that's really important to you, uh, let me know your use case and um, you know maybe I'll spend some time optimizing that. As far as um, when this software is going to get released, I'm planning to release um, the new software with this digital read mode uh, after you know I do just a little bit more testing. If anyone has a Camerax 5 Shield, uh, you know please download the software. I'll have the link in the show notes and you know test it out and the more people who can test it out before I release it, uh, the less likely that there will be bugs in the uh, the official release, and you know that'll be good. There's a bunch of other changes too to the software, so you know maybe some other things in, in it will be uh, interesting to you as well. Thanks for watching.